Good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, everybody, uh, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Elena Nizhnik, and I am going to be your co-host today. We have a super special guest. Today, Laura from DressX is joining us to show you how she creates 3D concept art for DressX. Laura, welcome, and please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi everyone, thank you very much Lena for inviting me to this live stream. I work as a 3D concept artist at DressX, DressX being the largest retail platform for digital fashion and also a provider of digital fashion for AR, like the earrings that I'm wearing today, uh, also for metaverses and for photo looks. At DressX, I'm in charge of creating concepts and then uh, making them into 3D models, either in Flow 3D or Cinema, in which I will be working today. So today I'm, I'm going to create this pair of earrings, uh, but in a special edition for Snap. <laughs> exciting, exciting. And Laura, um, where are you joining us from today? I'm joining you from Romania. Wonderful. I'm joining from uh, outside of New York City, uh, actually between New York and Philadelphia. So welcome to all of our guests. Um, if you all would like to share with us where you're joining from, we would love to see where you're coming from. Uh, and we welcome you to the stream. Um, please make sure to ask questions. This is an interactive session. Everything is happening live. So, you know, if something happens, if there are any <laughs> hiccups and mishaps, that's just the bonus of live development. We're looking forward to your questions. And Laura, you mentioned that you're working in cinema uh, 4d and uh, clo 3d uh, can you tell us a little bit about the process and where do you start you know uh, and what's the difference between the two programs so i'm going to use cinema 4d for the hard surface elements in the earrings like the pearls the gemstones and then i will use clo 3d for the ruffles which is a software dedicated to garment creation or any item that's made of fabric Okay, really exciting. And just so that everybody knows, the asset that Laura creates today, uh, we have a follow-up stream coming up and Laura's uh, actually co-worker will then create a lens live. So make sure that you follow the channel and you have your notifications turned on because we have a stream coming up where whatever is created today will actually be turned into a Snapchat lens in the follow-up stream. So Laura, take it away. Sure. So without further ado, let's get started in cinema. I'm going to start by making the heart by adding a sphere to the scene and I'm going to uh, turn the wireframe on and I'm going to scale this to two centimeters, press S to focus and I'm going to put the segments up to 50. Okay. Then I'm going to apply a formula to this sphere which is going to turn it into the actual heart. Um, there's like a special formula that's ideal for making hearts in cinema. Um, we tried and tested, so I'm just gonna type it in. Okay, so now we turn this sphere into something that resembles a heart, but I think um, I want to change a bit this to make it. Okay, not so fast. Maybe, yes, that's perfect. And now I actually want only half of this heart, so I'm gonna convert this into an object and hide this old one. And now that I have converted it into an object, I can modify it. And I'm gonna go into my right side view Go to point mode, rectangle selection, and I'm going to delete all the points that are on the back of the heart. Okay, so now we only have half of the heart and I'm also do a flat back on it. Laura, give us just one second. I think we uh, lost your screen for just one moment and we're back. Thank you. Okay. Okay, that's good. I'm going to into edge mode 
a loop selection and I'm gonna select the last loop of this heart. I'm going to edge the spline and I'll take this spline from the actual heart and I will use it to create the back of the heart. Um, I should use the head bar from Cinema because it's uh, much easier for me than remembering where all the items are in the menu. I'm going to change the direction to C and I do this. Mm, okay, that looks great. And now I want to dis disable the start cap because I don't need this part. This just Okay, and now I want to create the metal chain and I'll do this by inserting a torus this way thick now. I'm gonna change the orientation to plus zero. Can mm. it way more down? Maybe mm. Mm -hmm. And also, I want to be thinner. Yeah. And now I'm gonna use the cloner to create three clones in a line of these torus. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna move this just a bit inside the heart. And now I will start working on the um, smaller part of the chain by copying the previous cloner. I'm gonna scale this down and I change it to only two. And I also want these uh, toruses to be closer to each other, maybe something like that. Laura, nice. and, and Cinema um, is a software of your choice. Uh, for our viewers, if they're using, for instance, Blender, um, which I think a lot of people end up using because it's you know open source and, and, and free, how similar are these workflows? Um, is this very specific to just uh, Cinema 4D or is what you're showing uh, kind of applicable and can also, you know, all these tips and tricks can be used in, in Blender? I think it can be used in every any 3D modeling software because uh, especially the making of these earrings is mostly based on primitives like uh, spheres and toruses and such. So you can create this in any 3D software. Okay, that's really good to know. Thank you. But uh, yes, I usually use Cinema because uh, I also do some the motion design and um, in cinema, I, I get the right tools for that. Okay. I also want to clone this small chain that, that I've just done in, uh, basically I'm, this way I'm completing the top part. Uh, now I want to tidy up a bit and group these parts that make the chain and I'm going to make this top chain and I copy this to create the bottom chain. As someone who does not create 3D concept art or art at all, um, this all just looks like witchcraft to me and total magic. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just really excited that you're breaking it down for us. Um, and Laura, uh, one of our viewers, Bissal Ahmed, is uh, saying that they work on fashion AR, but sometimes there is a problem when a complex garment file is very large. So uh, their question is, um, how will the particle distance of the garment, uh, how should the particle distance of the garment be done to get high quality from Clo 3D, but still within the uh, size of the asset. Do you have any uh, tips with that for that? Yes, so there's not really a direct way to use 
a garment exported from Flow right into Lens Studio, you need to go through an optimization process, which will be shown by Anton next week. So each, um, each mesh exported from Flow usually needs retopologizing. So, Basal, make sure that you join us on the next stream mm -hmm. uh, when Laura's uh, colleague will actually show the optimization process, um, because I think that you're not the only one who is experiencing uh, this sort of uh, challenge. So please join us. Uh, you'll see it live and Anton will share all the tips and tricks on optimization to make sure that the uh, vertical distance uh, of the garment is optimized and it's still high, um, high res, but uh, optimized for the use for Lens Studio. Okay, so now we're in point mode with the pen tool. I'm going to start creating the bottom pearl. Something like this. And then I'm going to add volume to it by applying the leg. I want to adjust this a little bit, maybe narrow the top of it and enlarge the okay. Um. Of course, we can always stick this. But I think that's it. Okay, and if I go into solid view mode, I notice that this is not very smooth here. So I'm going to change the spline mode to 21. And I know that creates more geometry, but my colleague will take care of it next week. And Laura, I think we had a few more guests join us. For those of you that is just joining us, uh, welcome to today's stream. Um, you have incredible Laura from DressX. Laura is a 3D concept mm -hmm. artist and uh, Laura is developing live a very special version of earrings that her colleague in the next stream will turn into a um, Lens in Lens Studio. So welcome and feel free to ask any questions. Uh, Laura has done a lot of really incredible uh, AR work for DressX, which I'll actually share some of it in the comment section here. Welcome. Now I want to create uh, this top stone also from a primitive, which is the cube, but we are going to make more like uh, Rectangle out of it. So let's change the dimensions. Mm -hmm. okay. And now I want to make this editable, so I'm gonna press B. I'm gonna Go to brush selection, select the front and back rectangles, and I will bevel this. Mm, and also offset. So now I have something very close to a gemstone, but what it's missing are actually the edges, which should also be beveled. So for that, I'm going again into front view mode. I'm going for in edge mode in loop selection. And I will select these. Make sure that all the edges are selected. But I'm going to deselect the this uh, horizontal edge. And I will again better in my Something like that. And now, just this and make sure I disable visible only because I want this to affect both the front and the back. 
So I'm gonna widen this one. And I'll do the same for the vertical inner ones. I'll just lengthen them. Yeah. That looks right. Okay, now I want to add this row of pearls um, right around the gemstone. So for that, I'm gonna use the geometry from the gemstone and place this under a cloner as a guide. I'm going again into edge mode loop selection. I'll select this edge of the gemstone. I'm going to right click and edge the spline. I'll take this out from the gemstone and also remain to tidy up the work. I'm gonna add a sphere to the scene which will be used as a bar for the drop around the gemstone. This is way too big. I'm bringing a cloner into the scene and I'm just going to put the sphere under it. I'm changing the cloner mode to object and I'm dragging the line that I just extracted from the joints onto the object. So now we have some pearls around the gemstone, but I want to switch the distribution to even. And I'm going to play this 22. Right. And Laura, also, what this change in the distribution does to? Uh, it just makes the, them to be evenly distributed on each uh, side and on each on each edge. So that you don't have to do it manually. Yes, and th so that they are equal on each uh, face of the gemstone. Now I want to adjust this a bit so that do not fall, they do not collide with the pencil. and rename them so also this one this bottom okay so now we've finished modeling the hard surface elements of this earring and we can move on to cloud 3d to create the ruffles uh, but for that, I'm going to screenshot the shape of the earring here so that we get the, this contour of the heart and use it as a base in close I'm just going to take the screenshot. Oh, uh, that's a screenshot for some reason. Why is it not screenshot? <laughs> it's That's because so we're streaming live. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. Um, so I cannot screenshot while I'm streaming? But, you uh, know, I wonder if it's because we're using the screen capture technology. Wait, maybe, uh, maybe it's gonna work. Hey, it worked. <laughs> it worked. Awesome. <laughs> I'm just gonna save it in on my desktop. Okay. Laura, just watching how fast you do all of this, how long have you <laughs> been doing 3D concept design? Um, I've actually, I ha it hasn't been a year since I started working in cinema. I think by around this time last year, I was still learning cinema. Wow. But uh, because I'm working uh, in cinema almost every day, it gets kind of easy. I'm more used to Cloud. Okay. This is my main software as a okay. garment creator. 
And did you study garment creation uh, formally? Did you go to school for that or did you pick it up uh, on your own? Yes, I have a background in traditional fashion. So I studied at London College of Fashion and then I worked at a few luxury brands before I switched to digital fashion during the pandemic. I see. You're a true inspiration for our viewers. <laughs> Thank you. So now that we are in CLO, I'm just uh, importing uh, 50 by 50 centimeter square. I basically use this as the base. This will become our heart and around it I will uh, switch the ruffles. Uh, we have uh, this fabric assigned to it already by default, but I want to change the texture to the screenshot I've just made so that we we get the shape of the heart. I want to scale this up so that it fills the whole square. And now I'm going to internal line, polygon line, which is a tool similar to the line pen tool, I would say. And I'm just going to trace half of the heart. I'm just adjusting this nice to make sure that we have an accurate shape. Okay, now I'm going to select this uh, shape that I just drew. I'm going to right click and cut. Now we can delete this panel because we are no longer using it. I'm going to click on the center line of this heart, right click on it and unfold a symmetric editing which will create a whole heart. And because it's with uh, symmetric ed editing, it means that anything we will sew on this side or anything we will edit will also apply on the other side. Now, um, starting to create the ruffle and this is gonna we are going to need, to need uh, a lot of fabric actually to have those ruffles and those gatherings around the heart i'm going to add another fabric into the scene i am selecting the ruffle panel and i'm applying the fabric to it And because I want these ruffles to be quite stiff, I will change the physical property of this fabric to full grain leather, which is uh, the stiffest material that you can get in clothes. But I don't want this to be heavy, so I'll just zero out the test. So um, fabrics in clothes act like fabrics in real life, so you can use uh, satin, cotton, denim, and leather, and they can have the same physics as a real life fabric, but it's also fun that you can combine them. For example, you can have the look of a denim fabric, but then make it behave like a satin or like chiffon. So now I've just sewn the half of the ruffle to half of the heart and because we had uh, symmetrical editing applied you can see that also the other half has been sewn onto the half of the heart. I'm gonna place the press space bar to simulate it but first uh, so that we don't have any falling fabrics I want to right click on the heart and freeze it which means that it will not move it will stay in place while this one 
will actually sew onto the heart and because we have a lot of fabric there are gonna be some glitches but it's gonna it's gonna fix right there now i want to stitch together the edges of this ruffle so that they are sewn here and the points are merged and i also want to shape this ruffle a bit make it wider here but then smaller at the top and at the bottom I love seeing the movement simulated in real time. That's ah, really yes. fun. Yes. I love that as well. <laughs> and Laura, you mentioned that fabrics in uh, Clo have the same physical properties as they would in real life. Does that mean that if you are uh, prototype in something you can sort of achieve the look by changing the actual fabric to see how it behaves um, so that you you know achieve the result that you're looking for um, say that if you are not familiar with how fabrics behave in real life could you just kind of flip through them and see what it does um, yes yes of course um, it's actually also used for actual physical prototyping of garments so what you see in glow in terms of how the fabrics react, uh, it's very similar to how a garment would be in real life made of that fabric. That's so incredible. Here I want to make sure that I have some room for the chain because the chain is going to come right here and at the bottom so i don't want to have any collision between the two but even if we have the uh, i'm going in with the steam tool just to deflect Yeah, this part is a bit tricky <laughs> because uh, I don't have the chain in this team to create collision, but I need to think yes, so ahead of how. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, exactly. I think that's fine. You can also change it in cinema. I think Maybe. everybody's pretty impressed with what you're doing. Uh, Ahmed says it is so amazing, and uh, we have so many people thanking you for this. And actually, Vestal says that we need more tutorials uh, on how to get high quality uh, garments in Snapchat, particularly from the DressX team. So I think you. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have a lot of fans of what you do here. <laughs> Thank you. And Laura, um, we have a question. Uh, what is the difference between Cinema 4D and Blender? Is it normal using Blender instead of Cinema 4D for this tutorial instead? Yes, you could also use Blender. Uh, I yes, think sure. the, the main difference, right? Laura mentioned it in the beginning, uh, but I, I don't, I think you guys just uh, joined us. Um, most of the work that Laura was doing in Cinema 4D can also be done in Blender. It is really, I guess, uh, it comes down to the preferences of the program that you would like to work with. And of course, there is, um, you know, one of them is a premium program, another one is not. So you can choose whichever one you prefer, but everything that you are doing can be achieved in another program possibly with some optimizations and processes and slightly different workflows, right, Laura? Yes, exactly. 
It's up to the creator in which uh, software they are mostly comfortable with. Now I'm ready to bring this wrapper into Cinema. So I will export this as an FTX. Um, and I name this Raffles. So the ideal settings is to export it as a single object, clean and welded. Um, this means that all the points at streamlines are going to be joined. So the, every part of the garment will be as a whole object. And I'm going to leave these settings as they are. I'm going to click OK. And now we are going back to cinema where I'm going to import this uh, ruffle that I've just created. So now I can already see that it's very small, so we are going to scale it up. And it has also imported the inside of the heart, which I actually don't need. So because this has selection tags, I can use one of the polygon selection tags. Yes, this one. And I just press delete to get rid of it. And also we don't need this base materials. So now I'm just going to center actually the axis of these ruffles to the center because now the axis is here but the ruffles are there which is not right I'm gonna move this one down okay and I'm gonna scale this up And if you guys haven't noticed, Laura is actually wearing the dress X earrings right now, um, which yeah. you will see that, you know, in real time, she's designing uh, the earrings. But this is a special edition. This is just for, for this live stream. Mm -hmm. Laura, would you just entertain us for a second and show how yeah, we sure. can actually flip through them and their different options? Yeah, sure. So there is this one. Has it changed? It has, yeah. Okay, and we also have this version. Oh, has it changed now? I think that the it's also the applying X. to the commands in Cinema. <laughs> <which is funny. laughs> and now I'm back I love on the original one, but with the green stone. I love seeing all the different iterations. Okay, I think that's right. Just want to make sure I don't have any gap between the heart and the ruffles. And what I want to do now is, as you can see, we do have some collision with the chain, but we can go into scalp mode, make sure we have the ruffle selected, and I'm going to pick this tool in place. I'm just gonna make sure that the ruffle is in front of the chain and same here. I'm just gonna skip down a bit. Okay, now we have And Laura, you're doing this to make sure that there is no collision in geometry? Oh, uh, yes, if that's exactly. the proper way, proper terms? <laughs> yes, because 
there was a bit of collision with the chain. And what would that mean if you left it as is? What do you think that that would do uh, in the final uh, Lens Studio project? Um, I think it's just a visual effect um, that you would have this chain of seeing through the fabric. Got but it. it wouldn't. It wouldn't affect. I don't think it would affect functionality. Okay, so now we have the completed viewing. Maybe I want to scale this up a bit actually. I'm going back into startup mode. Mm, I'm scaling this bottom pole just a bit. I move it in its right position. My axis is off. Okay, so now that we have finished modeling it, I'm going to start applying the material state. And uh, I'm actually going to use some standard materials from the Cinema 4D library. I want to use the um, plastic for the heart. So I will bring into the scene the plastic green glossy material. And I will switch the color to the snap color, the yellow one, which is... I want to use the... FFP00. I just drag this from here and I place it onto the heart, on also on the right, and also to the back, even though we don't really see it in the lens. Okay. And I'm also going to press Ctrl R just to get a preview of how this will look rendered. I think I want to be glossier, like the one I'm wearing now. I'm going to reflect uh, and I will add a reflection legacy mm, with the same color code. Mm, now it's a bit too shiny, <laughs> so I'm going to increase this roughness and that looks closer. I want to Now it's time to texture the chain, which will be in silver. So I'm just going to type in silver into the asset browser and I'm going to drag this silver material onto the bottom chain at the top chain. to use the same material for the pearls and also for the bottom pearl. Mm, I'm gonna do that with this silver glossy one which is very similar to pearl. I should move this gemstone to first sit down. Mm -hmm. 
you can always tweak, tweak this when you work in 3D. Sometimes you have a design in mind when you start and then throughout the 3D process you realize that maybe there's a better way to do it and you find ideas and inspiration just by 3D modeling. Yeah, exactly. And now the only thing left is the Can you hear me? I don't know. I think yeah, I think I was muted uh, for a second. I had a sneezing fit, you guys. I'm sorry. So uh, our stream producer muted me because I kept on sneezing. Thank you. Um, I guess I was just saying that Laura mentioned that you start with one thing and then you can end up with something else as your design process changes while uh, while you're doing it live. And I just said that's kind of the beauty of, you know, all the technology that we have now. You can start with one idea, but by the time you're done, because it's iterating and changing in front of your eyes so you can end up with something totally different and that's wonderful um i think it's a great way to let your creative uh, process flow okay i think uh we are done <laughs> uh, i finished adding all the materials to it but what i also want to do is visualize how these earrings would actually look like on a person wearing them. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna group all the elements that make up this earring. I renamed it earring. And I'm gonna bring in to the scene a uh, head mannequin. And I'm going to place this earring on it. But I don't want to change the position of this original earring because that's the one that's going to be optimized. Instead, I'm going to create an instance of it. And I'll just drag that instance. And now I notice that it's too big. So I actually need to scale the original one so that it affects the size of the instance. So I'm going to bring into the scene the symmetry tool and I'm going to place this instance underneath the symmetry and now we have a complete pair of earrings. I'm just totally blown away, Laura, that <laughs> you were able to create this so fast. Um, absolutely incredible just to see the speed and the beauty and the quality of everything that you've done um total inspiration everybody who is watching uh you guys feel free to ask any questions laura is a true true <laughs> specialist so i uh, shall be happy to answer your questions but i'm just completely blown away i think if i tried to do that that it probably would take me a week at least <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so this is the model that my colleague Anton will use to create a net lens like the one I'm wearing. So this 3D asset that I created today will become a wearable one. 
And Laura, earlier you've shown us um, how the earrings that you're wearing have different variations uh, as you kind of flip through them. And I believe you're doing that through uh, Snapcam, right? Uh, yes. So it's, if it's different lenses. It's different lenses. So if somebody is trying to, you know, create a lens with the same asset, but give different variations of textures and colors and whatnot, right? Um, where do you recommend that they actually create different textures? Which program would you recommend that they use? Which software, I should say? Uh, I guess you could also texture them in cinema with different materials. Like we could make, for example, this part instead of the plastic that it is now we could replace it with the diamond that's on the gemstone but if you want prints like uh, flags or any sort of print uh, you could use substance painter for it to first uv unwrap the model in cinema and then import it in substance painter or you could also use the substance materials inside cinema Got it. So definitely multiple options out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, Laura, thank you so much for taking the time and joining us today, uh, sharing your creative process. And as I said, I'm completely uh, blown away by the fact that you were able to do this in less than an hour. Uh, what a treat to have had you here today with us. And I hope that everybody who's watched this video will be inspired to go on and design their own 3D garment, uh, jewelry, uh, accessory, and then make a try on lens uh, in Lens Studio for Snapchat. Um, Laura, would you tell our viewers where they can find more from DressX uh, and how to uh, find your work? Yeah, sure. So you can check out our uh, digital fashion on dressx.com. We also have our own uh, marketplace for NFT fashion, which is nft.dressx.com. And you can find my work on Instagram. I'm under Laura Tronkota. Thank you so much, Laura. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We hope you'll join us next time when Laura's colleague Anton will actually take uh, these earrings and will build a Snapchat lens live. Uh, thank you all for watching it and we'll thank see you me. next time. Thank you everyone.